the soil was not healthy enough. It was, if it was healthy, it would have not have been as catastrophic when it comes to the fire. Like the desert is dead. We don't agree. We are usually throwing in the garbage when right now is ending up in landfills. First thing that we hear when we say that we are composting, isn't it smelly? Welcome to this special series on Impact Talk in collaboration with Advanced Media Trading, stories of UAE's purpose-driven entrepreneurs. In this series, we'll explore the stories of five incredible women entrepreneurs, and we'll talk about how they are creating an impact in the UAE. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce Lara and Jelan from the West Lab. They are both the co-founders of The West Lab, a startup focusing on nature-based composting that diverts food scraps from landfills. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good morning, Nadine. Great. We're good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Really happy to have you here. It's our pleasure. <laughs> so I want to start the conversation by coming a little bit, you know, uh, on your background, because I know that... Uh, Jelan, you were an architect, uh, Lara, you were in communication, and now yeah. you're the co-founders of this incredible, you know, company, The West Lab, fighting food waste. So can you take us through this journey, you know, how you, how you, your path, you, how was your path into sustainability to finally, you know, start this new venture? I mean, I think uh, we have like a slightly different stories, uh, but what brought us together was soil. We figured out two individuals coming from completely different backgrounds, but we found out that we have a passion and uh, like eager to learn more about soil. We start watching a lot of documentaries, um, taking a lot of workshops, and the more that we understood that we actually need to build soil too, because we always like you know we are coming from two different backgrounds. Uh, we thought someone as taking care of building soil parts, like it wasn't mm -hmm. our uh, forte to do it. And so we weren't thinking about it. But me as an architect from an individual level, I'm a builder. Like, I like to build things from scratch. So we said like, you know what, like you're great with data, communication, customer relationship. So, and I want to build stuff. Like uh, I want to build soil this time instead of buildings. I want to build communities instead of other stuff. And I have also a lighting background. So I care about like uh, the psychology of people when how they are acting within a place. So like, look, nature is a perfect example of all these. So let's join forces together and make this happen. Uh, I mean, from my point of view, like this story started during COVID for us. Like uh, as individuals, we care about the environment. We were living together and um, we tried to do our part when it comes to preserving the environment, recycling, uh, segregating, uh, participating in, you know, clean up uh, beaches and different things. But when we were locked down during COVID, I think we understood something else and there was kind of a mind shift for us, like something so small as a virus can really impact the whole world. And unfortunately, it was something so negative. So like we said, like, we can actually make an impact as individuals joining forces together, even if we come from a different background than the usual, you know, environmental, uh, scientific, uh, engineering, tree hugger, you know, background. We can maybe offer some things from a different perspective. And this is why we, we started with this beginner's mindset. Like we want to build things from scratch and learn things uh, from different people and see what we can join together and offer the world. So from my point of view, like I've been working for 13 years from in corporates, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something with a purpose that gives back to the community. And unfortunately, like during COVID as well, there was a lot of wildfires everywhere in Turkey, in Lebanon, in Australia. And we understood that the soil was not healthy enough. It was, if it was healthy, it would have not have been as catastrophic when it comes to the fire. So we just linked some things like, what can we do with food? that is usually thrown away. Unfortunately, it's everywhere, not just in the UE. We throw almost half of the food we buy. What can we do and for it to become a resource that can go back into the soil? And this is when we discovered composting. And this is how we started uh, from small conversations to more research, as Jaylen said, talking to experts. And that was the start of the journey. And lockdown together, trying to <laughs> make an impact and make a difference in our lives and in others as well. 
So, so the pandemic played a huge role actually in your, in your uh, journey. A lot, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we were uh, one of the lucky ones, I guess. Like we were fortunate enough to be here mm. and to stay together. Because like uh, we start, of course, every, like everyone else, we start asking these existential questions. Why we are here, what we are doing, like what's happening around us. And I think it was, COVID was a great like a reminder mm. that things can go so south and wrong. And we play a huge role in this. And like a, I think climate change has been a big topic in years and years, but we are ignoring it. We are still ignoring it, even though we see tangible effects on earth and nature. And now it's affecting like individually, personally, and altogether us, uh, the floods, this like weather changes everywhere, the depletion of soil, wildfires, like uh, what else do we need to take action? So we said like, uh, we don't want to wait someone else mm. to take action for us. We can and we would like to, and we know that there are so many people out there like us. We just want to give them uh, tools that they could join us as well, and we could create this ripple effect, this community that we could, like a one by one, not perfect, but something. So that's why like uh, impact for us was the key the soil and creating impact. We started, it was just an idea, something small. Now uh, it grew uh, quite a bit. Uh, this is showing us again, like uh, it's feasible. It's hard, it's not easy at, at all. It doesn't happen in one night, but it happens. And you've been doing a great job. I've Thank seen, you. you know, how uh, the last mm -hmm. couple of years, you know, the West Live evolved. And Thanks so much. So. The, this series is all about purpose. So can you tell us more about your, your purpose and your mission at the Waste Lab? So uh, as I mentioned earlier, like um, food waste is a big problem here and all over the world. Uh, and in the UAE, like everywhere else, we waste a lot of food, whether it's from our homes, from a hotel, from a restaurant, from a kitchen. And uh, we really believe that there's, there's value out of this food. Like for us, waste, food is not waste. It's a concept that we made and we want to eliminate it. So food that we are usually throwing in the garbage bin right now is ending up in landfills. And you know the detrimental uh, problems and effects a landfill has on, on our you know, soil and our uh, you know, um, air, everywhere, water uh, table, everywhere. So we wanted to find another way and a simple way, like what can we do with this food that is usually going to landfill, how we can divert this and how we can join people and support them on the journey to actually start implementing sustainable way of food management. Whether it's a hotel, a restaurant, a school, a community, we wanted to offer solutions, practical solutions that empower people that they can actually make a difference. And this is our mission, like we want to rescue this food. We want to create value of it. And what better value than giving back to the soil? Like when you look here, we are in a desert. And when you look at the de desert, you think, uh, it's dead. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's, uh, let's not even think of doing something with it. But like from our experience, from our operations, once we apply compost to desert soil, it's changing. It's becoming more fertile. We're giving it the organic matter that it's so thirsty for and the, and the moisture of, as well. Mm -hmm. And what happens is nature takes its role and plants start, start growing. And how beautiful is this? Like we are working with the soil to make it give and work with nature so we can start talking about food security as well. Uh, growing local resources. Again, going back to COVID, like food security and, and the supply chain was a big issue. Twice, yeah. And uh, we need to be more self-sustained here and everywhere. So this is also something that is helping. Yeah, I think uh, the connection that we lost past couple of decades between us human beings and uh, nature, uh, we start seeing this more and more. And we said like, uh, you know what, we have actually great traditions around food, food waste. Um, we hear quite a bit here in this region, like a desert is dead. We don't agree, it's not. We have sandy soil here. We just need to find ways to, to make it better or to be able to work with it. Um, or 
like we hear a lot that it's culturally we prepare a lot of food we throw mm -hmm. a lot of food and we say like look yes right now this is what we practice and uh, but actually like yes we prepare a lot of food but it's always involved bringing so many people together sharing this food together if uh, there's a lentil dish that day tomorrow is a lentil soup so this table you notice or not it finishes up in a couple of days like uh, our moms they used to do and they are still doing a great job just circulating this food around so right now we lost these even small habits so this is what we want to talk about we want to tell stories about uh, banana peel what happens to banana like uh, we bring banana from all over the world ecuador like uh, philippines mm -hmm. india they travel like a banana travels 14,000 kilometers oh, wow. from Ecuador to come here. And we still discriminate because of its size, because of its color, then it gets brown, it gets wasted. We said like, look, like uh, I would be <laughs> in a different shape if I would travel 14,000 kilometers to come here. Like, you know, I would be also like, just like, don't do it. Like, think about it. Think about how much water we spent to grow one banana. It's like, uh, Best case scenario is 100 liters. So we, we are trying to like create a little bit of awareness, telling stories mm -hmm. based on our experience as well, to just change a bit of mindset. We don't need to be perfect. We don't need to do everything in one night, uh, 100%. But if you start thinking about a journey of a food, journey of a farmer, uh, our daily life here, how we can improve, how we can actually create a connection between the nature here and um, mix it. This is, this is what we are trying to do, yeah. And you're tackling like a huge issue, you know, this connection to nature, we lost it. And I think like coming back as well to our traditions and our relationship with food is, is truly important. So how, because you are extremely aware, you know, both of you, uh, and, and I can feel, and I know you, how connected you are, you know, with nature and how important this mission is for you. How um, do you convey the message to the people you work with? You've been a couple of years now in this journey. What have you learned? What worked and what didn't really work as well? Uh, I mean, the most important thing is the language. Yeah. We use positive language. We are not here to shame anyone or to point fingers that you are doing something wrong. This is not enough. You mm. need to push more. We, we understand everyone is on their journey towards doing something good to the world. And we need to celebrate everything. And uh, we, our role here is to support uh, and meet them wherever they are. And if they're willing to move forward, we are here to support when it comes to, you know, their food. So as Jayla mentioned, we do a lot of storytelling on things that usually we don't really talk about. We don't want to overwhelm people with big numbers or big statistics, because when we see them, like we don't understand what does it mean 500 tons of food waste being wasted? What does it really mean? We try to use a language that is more digestible, more relatable and empowering. And um, like, we, like we also talk about when it comes to composting about the nature part of things, mm -hmm. microorganisms, ants, spiders, these guys are the ones who are really doing the job and decomposing the food waste and, and making it into compost. And people are just not really maybe aware of it, or maybe when they see an ant in the compost pile, they will get scared or icky. We tell them, no, these guys are the ones who are really doing the hard job. So we try to personify these mm -hmm. creatures, bring them closer and really magnify, put the microscope on them and magnify them and tell their story. And to be honest, this is raising curiosity. When you become curious, you react and you ask questions. And when you ask questions, you gain knowledge. And when you gain knowledge, you have power in your hand to do something about it. So this is something. Another example, we did once uh, a pumpkin rescue during Halloween. Okay. So, you know, during Halloween, we buy pumpkins, mm -hmm. we use them for decoration and we buy so many and a lot of cases we cannot consume them. So they end up in our bin. So we did a campaign, we told them like, listen guys, we are, ha we are ready to pick those for free. Just let us know who wants this picked up. We will donate whatever is edible to the UAE Food Bank. We also partnered with another school who have their cooking classes and they do their co small composting and the rest we took them and composted them. And we got a lot of you know, uh, feedback like, oh, I didn't know I can do donate. 
I didn't know I can do something about it. So these small things, you know, like now, okay, now next time someone buys a pumpkin and it's still good, okay, now I can get in touch with the UE Food Bank and do something instead of throwing it in the in the bin. So just empowering speech, giving some details, some looking at things from a different angle, and uh, yeah, giving the knowledge that some people might lack. And it's okay, like we don't know everything. I think we don't have to know everything. The, that's that's the, our, right now, I think in our daily lives, we have so much pressure, mm. especially in cities, that we have to do everything. And we have to do everything perfect. And when we have this pressure, then it's, I think, paralyzing us. That we, we, are not, we are not doing anything. It's, it's becoming the reaction. So the more that uh, we, if we tell people to recycle, the more that they don't. Because then it's easier, like, you know, I do my part, I segregate, and then I see that um, at the end, nothing happens, right? So, like, we did, like, a lot of surveys, uh, we talked to so many people, uh, different backgrounds, uh, different nationalities. We have this advantage here in Dubai and in this, uh, like, in, in UAE. We have so many different backgrounds, so many different nationalities. So for us here, if we can manage things here mm. from an environment and weather perspective and also the human part, we can do this anywhere. We can duplicate and we can just adjust. Because if we can adopt this idea here with 200 different nationalities, it means this can be done anywhere and everywhere in the world. So that's why um, like we are, we are, we're just saying, like, uh, if you're recycling, Perfect, do it and demand if you want to receive your data because with, with our clients, this is what we are doing. We are the ones responsible and we want to be the accountable for what we are doing. We are promising you for you to become landfill free and this is what we are doing. We show you the data because we want to celebrate this data together as well. Uh, Hotel X, we collected this, 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 this. We came to you um, like, uh, five times this week. Uh, this is how many bins we collected it, inside. This was this. And then we have actually like a great relationship now with, uh, with our clients. We actually like uh, call them directly. Like uh, right now, like we receive uh, 30 kg perfectly edible chicken biryani. What happened? Like, why did you throw? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what was the like, you know, so we are trying to understand as well the operational uh, part to first reduce the waste happening. Then from there, if we don't have any uh, other ways to salvage this food, then like inedible parts that we are composting. And uh, that's a lot yeah. of education, actually. Yeah. You know, in the so yeah, we, we like we, we talk like uh, we like to talk, and the way that we are talking is not um, like a super technical mm. or scientific like we know the like you know a technical part of it from our operations or we like a, we are talking to researchers as well like we know a bit of technical part as well and we have team members that they are completely coming from an environmental and engineering uh, point of view so we we have these but we translate and uh, just make them easier to to understand from a just like a daily life mm. like what it does mean like you know we waste 1.3 billion tons of food like i can't imagine i'm an architect i'm good with scale like i can just imagine things with the, with the size and volume i can't even imagine what does it mean 1.3 billion so like we Is give that them five Burj Khalifas? <laughs> <laughs> not, not even. <laughs> so like we give them like, you know, like we narrow down, like this means all the food that we are producing in the world, like uh, one third of it is, ends up in landfill. Like, you know, every three uh, apples that we are growing, one of them is just gone. Three steaks, one of them gone. So when you start like you know giving these uh, smaller numbers that people are able to actually grasp mm. and say like look if, like I literally, literally went today to grocery shopping and I got three bananas does it mean that I'm going to throw one of them because this is the statistics this is what we are doing maybe I don't do it but what we want to like what we are trying to do is like I don't throw my bananas right I always find a way but this means, like, if we start talking, I don't do it, you don't do it, but someone is doing this. Someone mm -hmm. is throwing two bananas instead of one. 
So if we start, let's say, like, look, like, why we shouldn't be throwing, or why we should be donating if we don't eat, or why we should, shouldn't be buying three bananas if we are not eating two of them anyway, mm. just go one, like, get one. So, like, just changing this uh, habits of, habits of people. Uh, yeah, mm. and we want people to talk about this. We want to mm. normalize this topic. Food waste is not something icky. Mm. We created this ickiness. You do it well, actually, because simplifying, you know, the jargon around, you yeah. know, food waste, climate change, sustainability in general is so, so important. So, um, yeah, telling stories, being positive is, uh, is really an amazing approach. So uh, you mentioned that you worked with hotels. So I guess you work with organizations. You work as well with individuals. Um, do you have any measure of your impact? Because I know that you sent, as you mentioned, you know, Jaylan, some yeah. you know, reporting measures to, uh, to your clients. Can you quantify or give us you know, an idea of your impact so far at the West Lab? Yes, so uh, yeah, we measure everything that we receive from hotels, restaurants, community schools, because again, we want to celebrate this effort. We want to give transparency, we want to show people, in the, whether individual hotel, that you are actually making an impact. It uh, helps them being more consistent and it helps them also share this with their stakeholders and, uh, you know, with their clients with, internally. It's, it's good. Uh, so last year we did, last year was our, let's say, um, starting point uh, of operations and we were more of a smaller scale. In the whole year we did um, 46, we rescued 46 tons of food waste. This year we are triple, and thanks to us getting a land to do the large scale, you know, of uh, composting, because we need a big land to accommodate, you know, 500 kgs from a hotel every day. So this land allowed us to actually compost more every day. And right now, I would say, yes, we are around uh, 150 tons of food waste rescued so far. Just this year, yeah, like... Uh End of May, yeah, we were around like a 130,000 uh, kgs of uh, food diverted from landfill. And uh, these, uh, they are being composted in far our farmland. Mm -hmm. We have food rescuers on board. We have farmers on board uh, where they check each pile every day. We check what is the micro and macroorganism mm -hmm. inside the piles like the temperature of it, the moisture of it. So like uh, we love to, to take care of them and uh, to seeing uh, like a, a part of the food that you didn't eat to turn into something like a soil-like structure that it smells like really like a rain, the, the soil like after rain, the smell. This is the only smell that you could get from nature we actually get this from our compost piles. And this is also something that we are always telling. The first thing that we hear when we say that we are composting, isn't it smelly? <laughs> say like, look, this is a huge misconception around composting. Composting is a natural process mm -hmm. that it, it's not necessarily smelly and it's not smelly at all. Like anyone that is coming to our farmland, the first thing that they say, there is no smell here. It's not smelly because mm -hmm. like, we know how to manage our piles. We know their language. We know what needs to go in. We know the mixtures. We know the science and there is this part behind it. But also you don't have to know all these mm -hmm. to be able to compost because it's nature. It has like a, it's resilient and it's, uh, it's, it's like, it's actually forgives us quite a bit before it starts uh, like a creating smell or creating problem. Like it, it does its job to the hundred percent before it starts warning you. Mm. So if you start like, you know, like a learning from these a bit, then things are getting super easy. And like hopefully this year, like a coming season, uh, we will be opening our farmland for, for workshops because we really want anyone and everyone. So we can come. Yeah, um, like yes, we, we wanna, it. yeah, we wanna like uh, create some workshops mm -hmm. for people to actually come um, and do composting mm. with us. We want to give everyone a pitchfork. I see, like, this is what we receive. This is, this is the waste that we receive. But what happens to it? How we turn this into is something that it could go back to our soil, it could go back to our, like, you know, uh, garden, our plants, that we could grow more, 
that we could actually like uh, practice a circular economy without even putting so much effort. So. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> so the podcast is called Impact Talk. So if you could give one piece of advice um, to inspire people listening to you who really want to make a difference and, and make an impact, what would it be? I would say like just start. Mm. Like uh, you see a lot of examples out there and sometimes uh, you feel you can do so many things which kind of makes you paralyzed. Like wh mm. from where do I start? Do I need to do this or that? What is more important? Should I recycle plastic first or should I recycle food waste first? Just start from anywhere. Uh, and this is perfect enough. And you don't need to be perfect. Just you doing things, like, and this is known, imperfectly is perfect. At, and this is, and make sure that you show these values to your children. Mm. Because they're the ones who are taking the, you know, earth after us. And uh, like, I, I believe there's some gap. Like, we need to relearn what our grandparents used to know. There's something that happened in the middle that we forgot our connection to nature or maybe how to repurpose our leftovers. Let's try to relearn these and pass them again to our children because this, this ensures that there's a continuation of things that we used to do before that actually take, uh, take care of nature, that are more connected to nature. So yeah, this is my advice. Just start, even if it's not perfect, mm -hmm. it's, it's great. And if you need support, there are always people that can support you on the journey. You're not alone. And every small thing that you do actually can make a difference. Yeah, I think I'm going to just uh, add to what Lara said. Uh, the starting is super important. Uh, and when we are starting, like we started at beginner's mind. Mm. Let's just put all the like, you know, everything that is just like we gather in our heads so far, just put them aside. Uh, let's start fresh because this is what we need to do. We need to take all this like weights mm -hmm. on our shoulders and just start small, uh, beginner's mind, learn whatever you can, apply whatever you could in your life. And there are so many now, like a, especially here, so many startups, so many individuals that they are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Talk to them, help them, support them. Like uh, if, like, you know, if you are not able to do the certain things, like for example, like we do not recycle uh, at waste lab, like dry recyclables, but we work with our friends and our partners that they do great job because it's a, from startup to startup support as well. We talk about them with our friends, with our like you know clients. Mm -hmm. the, this support is quite important. If you are not doing physically by yourself, support others that they do. This is quite important. Um, yeah, like a showing uh, how and why to the young generation is quite important, or young professionals. Like uh, yesterday, we actually had a, a workshop with, um, with the, like a Gen Z crowd mm -hmm. that they are taking now the like uh, works over. Like they're all engineers, designers. And they were all asking, like now there are so many regulations when we are building a building that we need to pass. And they were saying like, usually like we are just ticking the box. They're saying like, look, I know it's faster and it's easier to tick the box, but later uh, we're gonna have more like, and many problems just because we are doing yes. this. Like uh, what I was telling them, look, if you need any help around food waste, just reach out to us mm -hmm. and uh, that we will be able to help you, just give you the tools mm -hmm. so you could actually from the scratch when you're building your buildings you can implement this like a segregation you can actually think about your garbage room how big they should be like what they need to have it's not just the room that is on the sides no like we need to think about these things now more and more i want to end the podcast by a last question for you because this special series is about purpose-driven entrepreneurs and you are like such an inspiration for living your purpose um, can I ask you, what have you let go of to follow your purpose? Personally, I, I, I leave my comfort zone every day. Mm. Uh, like when I started this journey, I knew that my life is going to change on different levels, personal, mm. financial, uh, career-wise, that 
this is not a, like a small decision that I'm going to do and just go to, to another nine to six job. I'm, we're starting something from scratch. We're going to learn something every day. And I'm going to put, be put in situations that I'm not familiar with. There's a lot of unknown. Mm -hmm. So this leaving comfort zone every day mm -hmm. is actually for me as well an opportunity to learn something new every day and to progress. Like I think these past two, three years, the amount of things I learned have been so intense. Like if I was working in, in like another job, mm -hmm. it would take me maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. So I definitely left my comfort, but in return, I got a lot of rewards, a lot of re learning, and I would not have it any other way. Beautiful. I think for me, it was a little bit more like, uh, I, I let go of um, certain emotions mm. because when I wasn't necessarily doing things on the ground, uh, I resented. Um, the authorities or the, I don't know, like a, oh. that I expected someone else to do something for, for this topic and not just this, but everything else. But now since we are on the ground, um, I think instead of uh, becoming even bitter, because you can easily get bitter it's it's hard what you're like what we are trying to do sometimes we are like a meeting as well individuals that they uh criticize mm -hmm. what we are doing and how we are doing instead of getting bitter we actually we are actually super like you know we have uh we are at peace because we know what we're doing we know we are doing the best we can and we are working with others as well that they are doing their best that they they can uh, and that's why the, the language that we are using is just becoming even more softer and even more positive. Just let's do whatever we can. And I am doing, I'm happy that I'm doing this, the impact that I'm seeing, like, you know, the news that we are getting from our clients, that their achievement, it's also like, it gives us this, the pure satisfaction that is actually, we are doing something. I don't need to wait mm -hmm. uh, X person uh, to do this for me, I am doing it. And I'm, I know that I am influencing others to go this direction that they could do positive change. We can feel it in your attitude, yeah. ladies. Yeah. yeah, you're very positive and you're very at peace and uh, you're doing really an amazing job. Thank you so much for sharing your story of purpose with us on this special podcast series. A really big thank you to our partner, Advanced Media, for hosting us in their showroom for this series. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. This is how we're going to spread the word about UAE's purpose-driven businesses. And stay tuned for our next episode on Impact Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.